Well, it's certainly been a difficult year to really nail down in terms of you know, future trends, given the massive disruptions we had to the economy. But I think that the uh, shock to the economy uh, that we have had since March and April of this year will ultimately be, will look, look back on it as being very disruptive and affecting parts of the economy in a permanent sort of a way. Some parts of the economy being affected positively because of, of, of lifestyle changes and some parts of the economy obviously being uh, decimated for some, some long time to come. Uh, we know that we had through June negative 9% real GDP year over year in the United States. That's not annualized. That's the year over year number. And of course, the third quarter is experiencing a huge snapback. But the law of compounding uh, is a little bit uh, uh, important to understand. You know, if you go down, if you have a quarter that annualizes, or, well, it's down 10%, then you have a quarter that's up uh, 10%, you're not all the way back. And uh, we are probably going to have uh, something like that in terms of third quarter GDP vis-a-vis -vis second quarter GDP, where it'll be some part of the way back. If we look at the major indicators of the economy, um, many of them are kind of halfway back. Some are two-thirds of the way back. And then there's those that are so high frequency that they look uber strong right now. If you look at the PMIs, they're just setting records because you had a hole to fill on these high-frequency indicators. It's my view that the uh, shock to the economy, the initial impact is disinflationary or deflationary, and I think that will last for a little while longer. We saw some uh, unreliable data sort of uh, take place on things like wage inflation because there was such a huge mix shift in the data set. You had so many people laid off, tens of millions of people, and so many of them were at low-paying professions. So it looks like there's a huge gain in average hourly earnings, but it's really uh, hard to discern what the real trend is because so much of the movement is due to the mixed shift. But I do think that many small businesses are going to remain permanently closed. I don't venture out too much because I'm trying to stay safe. And, but when I have to go to the bank or something, I notice every trip I take, there's more empty storefronts. And we're talking about in Santa Monica, California, a pretty, a pretty wealthy area. And businesses have been around a long, long time. I mean, my cleaners, for example, uh, has a permanently closed sign. I'm sort of shocked. I was going to drop off some laundry. And I've been going there for 27 years, and now it's permanently closed. And there's many examples of that, and they're, they're starting to really build up. So I think that part of the economy is going to be decimated in sort of a permanent sense. Also, I think there's going to be some de uh, deflationary things that have uh, come. I think they've started to begin in terms of the uh, wage pressure or the job losses climbing the economic ladder. As if you look at real estate data, it's really fascinating. You see, uh, nationwide, there's very little home supply, and that's driving higher home prices. But if you go to areas like Chicago or San Francisco or New York, uh, Los Angeles as well, uh, you're starting to see that there's quite a few listings. It's, there's no shortage at all. The listings in San Francisco, for example, homes looking to be sold is off the charts relative to recent years. So that is actually uh, disinflationary, I think, because those people might be learning that they don't have to ha live in an urban center. Maybe they can go live in Boise, Idaho or something, which I, I'm told is completely booming. Um, and I, I think that the, there's wage pressure from there because – you don't need to pay people as much in Boise as you do in San Francisco. And also, I think as companies uh, right size relative to the current environment, there's going to be pressure on wages as, uh, as, as well. If somebody's afraid of losing their job, I, I know that many, many people around the world, and certainly in the urban centers of the United States, had a crack of doom feeling around April that maybe they're going to lose their job. And we all know through years of analysis and reporting that the median household in America and even the, the top the third or so uh, register with virtually no savings. And so people are, are probably feeling very desperate about job security and the like. And I think this puts pressure on uh, consumer spending. I also think that the home price increases, which have been uh, born of uh, flight from urban centers, I actually think they're negative for consumer activity. A lot of people say this is a really strong part of the economy, and it is, but it has ramifications. If you have home prices that are getting less and less affordable and people are, uh, are buying more homes, 
they're, they're actually financially have less wherewithal to do other things in the economy and consumer spending. So there's wide-ranging ramifications. I don't want to drone on and on about this, but the last point I'm going to make is I just read an article today on Bloomberg that Suffolk County, in which the Hamptons resides, of course, is a mega wealthy area, is having a real fiscal crisis because 45 percent of their tax revenue comes from sales tax. And, of course, this season probably wasn't the most robust. And so Suffolk County, one of the richest counties in the country, is looking to maybe get federal assistance so that they can uh, run their their uh, local budget, and local administration properly. So lots and lots of dislocations. Uh, the thing that's uh, fascinating is against this backdrop of tremendous uncertainty economically, we've had, as everybody knows, a record run. So the biggest PE expansion in 30 years over the last six months of the S&P 500 in at least 30 years, taking us to levels that are comparable, to, unfortunately, valuation-wise, to very significant tops over the past uh, century.